What's happening, everybody? Welcome to Trivia Rogues Podcast. Billy, Don, Jeff, Rachel, back at it once again per the usual. What's happening, everybody? Not much. No? No. Mm -mm. Just uh, sitting here doing a podcast. I was say not much has happened in five minutes. No. Yeah. Just talking and actually ranting. All four of us, kind of. I've just been lost in the artwork that you yeah, had back bit. behind you. Oh, what my what my my kid did there for me? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I thought you painted that. <laughs> That's about how good I could do. I thought Jackson Pollock. That's good. <laughs> yeah. We've been through this. <laughs> Jackson Pollock. I don't get it, man. Like, maybe I'm not sophisticated enough to understand the genius behind Jackson Pollock, but I don't know. Not my thing. So uh, today we got an excellent show. We got some geography. Yeah, from Jeff, our favorite. Yes, um, right up there with science and nature. <laughs> what, what is, I think mine might be geography too, actually. Kind of. Yeah, it's yeah. more about the history of something historical uh, on a monument, which mm. is kind of geography. So, yeah. And then we got our beetle quiz, which Don has gone. You know, for someone who is obs- who is so just so on so many things with War of the Rogues, where oh, it has to be either in the, the title or the question or the answer. And, you know, now you're alternating spelling. You're doing homonyms. Save it for Billy Rance. I hey, think I've, everybody else is I've fine done I've done that before. I've actually done things that, that phonetically sound exactly like the word, too. I don't agree with putting Beatles questions in the Beatle. I don't agree with picking three topics, so there you go. <sighs> I'm going to lose this quiz so bad. Beatles. Probably. Yeah. Beatles. All right. So it's, a, it's a tough one. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, great. Excellent. Very tough. Excellent. Oh, my goodness. All right. So with that, I guess we'll go ahead and start stuff for today. I will be talking about Angkor Wat. What? There you go. I was like, <laughs> someone's got someone's to gotta latch onto that one. Yeah. So basically, Angkor Wat is in uh, modern-day Cambodia, and it is the pretty much – Best surviving structure of an ancient, not, no, I'm sorry, not an ancient city at all. It was like around 700 or 700. It was kind of beginning. So, so it was old. pretty old. Uh, an old city, yes. And it's the last really remaining thing. So before I go into the actual structure itself or what it is, I'm going to talk about the Khmer people. Um, so back in, uh, you know, old, old, old Cambodia, you had the uh, Khmer people who were rice harvesters. That was pretty much their primary um, way of life. You know, that's how they made their money, and that's how they they lived through trade. And they were doing this for over a thousand years. I mm. mean, we're, and the one article I, I looked at actually said thousands of years. So we're talking probably even well beyond, maybe into ancient times. That you know, these people are in this area doing what they have to do to uh, stay alive and harvesting rice. And uh, from what I understand, for the longest time, these were just very easygoing and peaceful people. I mean, it wasn't a whole lot of war where they were, you know, with, what they were doing. It was just kind of we're going to stay here and do our own thing and work the patties, go home, drink the sake. That's well, yeah. When, 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 when everything's rice, <laughs> rice patties. Can imagine living on rice cakes? <sighs> okay. Uh, anyway, I don't think they had rice cakes back then. <laughs> Why not? Not the one. Not the kind you're thinking right. of. Right, not the problem. Although the kind. apple cinnamon rice cakes from Quaker Oats, pretty good. They're Delicious. Right. They're, They're pretty right. good. Delicious. Yeah. The bland ones are, or the plain ones, you are, gotta, are crap. You got to put peanut butter on them. I mean, the apple cinnamon don't they don't need it though. No, they're good. They're delicious. No, you got to put. The peanut I'll eat the whole them. bag. Let's keep going. One one sitting. Just keep going. <laughs> shovel it in. Just shovel shovel rice cakes in. Yeah. Oh yeah. At least it's rice cakes. There you go. And not chocolate. It's not filling though. That's why I can shovel it. Well, the whole it bag in. might be. <laughs> What's yeah, that? Maybe. Start blowing up your stomach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. In early uh, common era years, small feudal kingdoms would start developing around where the Khmer people were set up. And because of this, they lived under many kings until the death of Jayavarman I in 681. After his death, it was kind of like a Game of Thrones free for all kind of thing going on. So he's dead. He leaves no heir, which is strange because well, I'll get that in a minute. But so basically, now you have all these separate kingdoms, all these different leaders kind of rising up from their area, saying we're we're taking over. We're in charge now. Mm-hmm. And fortunately for the Khmer people, their guy ends up winning. He ends up becoming the new king. So Jayavarman the first, 
had no sons, but the second king, the first king of the Khmer uh, dynasty or whatever, Jayavarman the second. Hmm. So basically, I, I can I think I can uh, you know attribute this to basically like you know someone in any kind of royalty or monarchy setting, you can have a King Jar- Charles the seventh. You know, it was more or less he was the seventh King Charles that was been that's been in mm-hmm. in the in the king's state or in the king's throne. So he wasn't necessarily he wasn't related, but he was the second Jayavarman to be king okay. uh, in this area. Um, so he deci- so Jayavarman the second decides to move his people to a new capital city in uh, modern day Cambodia, and he would name this new city Angkor, A N G K O R. Angkor would eventually become a huge civilization, big time. Um, so there's even one source that said that this was like you hear about all of these civilizations that were very advanced. You know, you talk about the, like the Incas, you know, the Mayans, the you know ancient Chinese, the Egyptians. All these had very sophisticated civilizations, but the Khmer people in, in Angkor they kind of take a back seat. But they were very advanced. Hmm. Um, so when you were over time, and actually, one source said that they had that Angkor was the size of about Manhattan or Manhattan Island, which in reality is fairly a fairly big yeah. city. Mm-hmm. It had fifteen foot walls that surrounded the entire city. So you have one city with fifteen foot walls that go around the entire thing. Yeah. Or when you have something that size, it can't just be a small village. It can't just be you know things here that it was this was a full-on city Mm -hmm. temples uh there's a palace in there for the king residences and probably one of the more one of the more interesting things is is that there was also a fairly incredible amount of uh water systems irrigation system because i mean even so even now that they're king the Khmer people who you know this is their dynasty so they're their people and who i from what i understand when you look at cambodian um uh, dem- uh, demographics the, the Khmer people are still the heavy majority mm. in Cambodia okay so you know they're still rice uh, harvesters that's still what they do and from what I can from what I saw online take it for what it's worth but you know this isn't just like casual rain can, can sustain a garden they need they needed some pretty significant irrigation to make rice a viable resource so they had to set up these systems where so you have inside the city, you have these constant canals and lakes and reservoirs that, that hold rain. I mean, it's it's fairly complex for what it was. I mean, if you look mm-hmm. at these ancient, um, I can't know, I just feel like this is an ancient like sounding thing, but it's not. It was, you know, a thousand years ago, um, a little more, but, you know, so, I mean, you just see all these waterways. Yeah. Whatever they, you know, just... Which all of the feed place. into other things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like almost like constant. And these waterways were pretty significant when you talk about you know transportation throughout the city. Mm-hmm. When you t- and then uh, like even for making temples and stuff, they would use these to move stones. You know, this isn't like a put logs underneath and roll it wherever they need mm. to go. They would use these canals and you know to float resources. Right. Wherever they need. And also, Angkor was a huge maritime trader. Yeah. So, you know, they would use it all to do all their trades. I mean, this was significant. So, I mean, pretty incredible when I, when I was looking into it, just how, I mean, because I'm not going to go too far into it, why go that far into it, but just the stuff that I was researching was just incredible. Yeah. Around 1120, under the order of King Suryavarman II, a huge temple was built, uh, possibly a mausoleum, because when you, when you go back in that, it's kind of like the... And that the kings of Egypt and the the pharaohs, you know, whenever they built these huge temples, it was also their burial rite, or they're also, you know, where they're going to be laid to rest. But however, unfortunately for him, Saryavarman was killed in battle, and he never got there. Mm. I thought he was going to say immortal and never died. Well, <laughs> that's with the uh, the Chinese emperor who with the mercury. They still haven't figured that out yet. They're still pouring mercury down their throats. Ah. Not accurate. Um, so uh, he was never, he, I don't think he was ever born or born, never born. I, don't he, I don't think he was ever, uh, <laughs> laid to rest there, but I, I think it's possible that they may have spread his ashes around there or something. Mm. Um, but he is not actually at rest his body there. So the temple that I would just described was, is known as Angkor Wat and is pretty much the only surviving structure or uh, maybe not the only surviving structure, but the, definitely the best shaped one okay. that still exists from this ancient city. Mm-hmm. So what is... Uh, how, what Son is, of a mother! It's not an ancient city! What? 
<laughs> so what is the definition of what? So uh, Angkor was the is it's kind of like a it's weird. It's like Angkor is the Khmer term for city, and then Wat would be temple. So it's really the temple city or the city temple. Mm. So that's that's the uh, terminology for it. And from what I can understand, Angkor Wat covers about a 500 acre area. This is it. this is possibly the largest religious monument today. This wow. thing is gigantic. 500 acres for a temple is wildly massive. Yeah. Um, and from what I understand, or from what I researched, it took about 30 to 40 years to complete. But mm. talk about the sheer size of this thing. This is unbelievable. Mostly made out of sandstone. Uh, so when you think about the rest of the place that, you know, rest of Angkor built from wood or whatever, you know, that stuff will, doesn't really stand the test of time. Mm-hmm. But this temple has done a fairly decent job of being. Now, that's not to say that it just survived. I mean, people have been, it's kind of the Colosseum. Every so often, the, someone will take over and go, wow, this is really incredible. We should do what we can to preserve fix it, it yeah. up and preserve it. But, Throw a coat of paint on it. <clears throat> oh, slap a fresh coat on there and it's good as new. But unfortunately, uh, most of that city has been completely lost to forests. Mm. One of the one of the interesting things about this is that, and then another way that they think it might have been a mausoleum was that it orients west, and the and west is associated with death in that kind of uh, in that culture, or in some Asian cultures, I believe. Mm-hmm. So you know, and it's, if it's specifically oriented west, that probably means that it was meant for some sort of death or or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the, when the temple was built, though, it was dedicated to the Hindu god Vishnu, uh, which the Khmer did practice when, in Hindu. You know, so this was Hinduism, which is which is kind of strange. But when you think of these old Asian places, you wouldn't think of Hindu. But that that time, Angkor and these old Cambodian uh, areas, they were heavily influenced by Indian culture. Hmm. So it's no surprise that they would be practicing Hindu. And you know, they would also get some influences from uh, Buddhists eventually. So, but I mean, and it's not like this is Hinduism. I mean, it, it's their. It almost seems like it was their take on Hinduism. It was Hinduism, right? But you know, just like anything, you know, you you practice something, and then somewhere far along they adapt it. It's mm-hmm. not probably not exactly the same, but it has same uh, components, like core, yeah, yeah. The core values or mm-hmm. or something. Um, and you can even see the Indian type of architecture kind of portrayed in, yeah. these, in these buildings too what's also incredible is that you know these kings you know especially when uh the first one um what was his name i'm sorry jaya varman the first or uh, second when he took over kind of like when we talked about king tut you know these weren't just kings these are people who had pretty significant ties to religion so you know unlike the pharaohs where they were kind of seen as a medium to the gods you know it's like okay we have the people, we have the pharaoh, and then there's the gods. So they're like this tie. So if you want to you want to please the gods, you have to please me. Mm. I I will be able to, to communicate with the gods. However, in this situation, you have god kings. You know, so these are kings who are portrayed as gods. You know, like you, you kind of see that in 300 where you have like this like where um, Xerxes, you know, being carried in these mon- like he almost he portrays himself as a god. You know, this is this is what's happening. Yeah. So he goes, you want to appease me because I am a god. You know, these were these. So when you hear about god kings, these are the people that we're talking about. Um, it's weird. Like looking at a picture of this place. Like if I didn't know where it was, I would guess it would be like in Mexico or something. Like it doesn't look like uh, other things in that area. And it's, uh, in that it's, area of the world, you know, it's crazy. It's a gorgeous building Mm -hmm. jeff have you seen it no it's pretty cool looking and because of what little is left of there it's kind of hard to perceive what it was once a part of as far as the the city is concerned because when angkor wat was was built it was supposed to be also very symbolic for what it was let's because for for instance you have the main temple itself which which is kind of like in the center because now i know i i'm not sure if what i said was came off how I meant it. So like the building,